Hello, I'm Deborah Cheatham, and wherever you live across this vast continent of ours, I'd like to begin by paying my respects to the elders and the ancestors of the country you live on. I'm speaking to you from the Eastern Kulin Nations, and the Bunwarang people have poured their knowledge and their song into this land for more than 2,000 generations. Just before we begin the rehearsal, I'd like to thank you for joining Classic Choir and for singing my new carol, Christmas With You. I'll be singing along with you and I can't wait to hear the final performance. We want you to sing your hearts out at home. Don't worry if the neighbours can hear you, they might want to join in. And you can just think about all the members of Classic Choir who are singing Christmas With You all over Australia. If you have to miss a rehearsal, no worries. Classic choir isn't as strict as most choirs need to be. You can join us online anytime on the ABC Classic website. Thanks again for being part of the Classic Choir. I hope you enjoy the rehearsal and I look forward to singing with you. Hi there, I'm Damien Beaumont from ABC Classic. Welcome to the fourth and final rehearsal of Christmas With You. I hope you've had a chance to join the rehearsals that we've had with Greta, Ed and Vanessa. Now, they've been wonderful rehearsals, but I have to confess, as a bass, I'm still having well, one or two moments that I'm not completely sure about. So, guess what? We're bringing in the expert himself, Ben Northey. Hi, Ben. G'day, Damien. We're getting to the business end of this now, aren't we? Oh, I tell you, <laughs> can I just say that I have thoroughly enjoyed this carol and yeah. I think that Deborah Cheatham has written what will become a classic I'm sure it's just a beautiful carol and wonderful sentiment isn't it I totally agree with you it, it is um, very very moving and I, I think it'll have a long life beyond this project I think this is the most exciting thing about what we're doing is that we're participating in the world premiere of what I think could end up being an Australian classic Christmas carol yeah. You know, this could endure for years and become an annual thing. And he is hoping that, that and that's why we've got to do such a great job, Damien. That the pressure's on. <laughs> no pressure. Yeah. Now, the thing is that we've taught most of Australian now, and we've got until the 27th of November for you to record this. So let's just talk about some of the final things that we'll be doing. But Ben, before we get to that point, you've had huge experience with choirs over the years. Tell me some of the funny things that have happened. Because, well, you know, let's face it, when we've got kids and adults together and, you know, we're trying to sing and we're all making mistakes, and we're all, you know, we're having a bit of fun. We're all learning, but there's surely there's some fun things that happen along the way, oh, isn't there? Always. And I love working with choirs. You know, I'm not a specialist choir conductor. There are people out there who are. Um, but when you get the chance to bring a choir and an orchestra together, usually that means you've got about 200 people on the stage. And that just that massive humanity, the fact that you're all working toward a common goal is what's so special about it. But I love the interaction between the different sections of the choirs. Um, you know, there are these stereotypes of, you know, sopranos behave a certain way. There's that funny relationship between sopranos and altos. The altos are absolutely sure that they're making the sopranos sound good, which is kind of true. The sopranos are taking all the glory. Um, the tenors are, are usually in the middle and, and they're, they're a special breed, the tenors as well. Um, you know, heroic and fragile at the same time is how I describe tennis. Yes. And then, of course, and of course, the bass. We just underpin everything. You need the basses there to support everybody else. The foundations, we're the bedrock of the choir. There's no question that you and I are both basses, aren't we? I mean, where, yes. what's your range? Do you know your range? Because people have asked about this. Yeah, it's really interesting because when I was studying singing, the idea was that we had to try and work to increase your range. Yeah. And to, and you try because you want to make sure that, in fact, you, you've got the largest range as possible when you're studying to be to be a singer. The bass notes never had a, they were never a problem for me. And the bottom G, you know, that's, wow. you know, when you hear that, that is those like... great Russian choirs, yeah they're down there warbling away that was never a problem but get me to what we call the passaggio in yes. the voice which is the passage yes and that's at a time when you you sort of have to really shift gear to get to that upper register yeah that for me was around about a d and an e flat 
I and see. I, I, and the E, I think, thus saith the Lord from, from Messiah, from memory, is a top E. So I can always remember that. Yeah. Mm, but they were always the hard beat. Yes. But they were the, always the hard notes. A good bass and, and a baritone should easily be able to get to the to the F and probably even a G. Yes. If mm, and, and then, then you're well you and truly into into tenor territory after that, and that's best that's left right. alone. I mean, for goodness' yeah. sake, how do they do it? Yeah. I have no that's idea. State. And people always say, "Why do singers look so pain when they're singing?" But there's a lot going on. I know. <laughs> I know. That's the thing. Where you know people have have been identifying their voice type by their speaking type. There are other people who say, I speak like a soprano, but I sing like a bass. How does that work? Yes. <laughs> so it's, yes. it's interesting. I also want to say, Ben, for the first for the first six months of my professional training at the Conservatorium in Adelaide, I was not allowed to sing, really, for a good few months. I had to learn where to place my voice because when I was younger, I used to speak back down, what we'd call speaking down the throat. It was a bit lazy, yeah. and I spoke down here. And then I had to learn to pick my voice up and get it up a bit higher, yeah. up into that whole resonant point of happens up in here in your sinus. And in a minute, we'll do a, a warm-up, which I think might help with that. But I just want to say there was a, a... I was thinking about some of those wonderful, funny moments in choirs because there's always a funny moment. Rarely would a rehearsal go by without a crazy moment happening. And I used to teach a, a children's choir in Adelaide for many, many years. And some of the stories, I, I just can't repeat things that happen, you know, things that happen... You know, suddenly smell will appear in the choir when it shouldn't appear. You know, all those weird, crazy things. But one of the funniest things I remember was in a rehearsal of Mozart's Requiem. In fact, it wasn't a rehearsal. It was, the, it was a performance. It was a stinking hot, hot day in the middle mm. of summer. And I was lucky enough to, to sing the tuba mirum, which has wow. a really long note that the yes. bass has to hold. Yeah. But as I hit that note, the poor alto behind me, because the choir was behind me, the alto fainted and sort of fell down right on top Such of me. Such an attention and- seeker. <laughs> you say, I- I'm going to leave that alone. It was a very hot day. Fair and enough. so I always remember this, this poor this poor person. She was so horrified afterwards that, that you know, during the Tuba Mirum Sparken, so yeah. all that long note, I had the person just collapse down on top of me. But we got through. <laughs> Dear me, that is dramatic. Well, if you can cope with that, you can cope with anything. But I'm I'm really thrilled to hear, Damien, that you are a you know a proper singer because you can oh. guide us through warm ups because that's the thing I you know I've got that sort of you know that everybody does on humming and goo 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 and all that kind of thing. What is your warm up? Ah, well, here's my go to, and you say a proper singer, but I I've since retired from singing, and a bit like if you're an athletic person or if you're into athlete, uh, athletics, once you've stopped. If you don't practice every day, then the muscles themselves, yeah. they just, they forget what they're doing and it takes a long time to recreate how good you should or could be. Yeah. So we should never forget with the voice that it is a complete instrument. You you are the instrument mm-hmm. and all of your muscles must be working together and we just have to train them to work together. So the first thing that I always do, and you probably can't see it, but I'm sat on the edge of my chair in a very upright position. I'm keeping my spine nice and straight because we should remember that the voice, it starts at the diaphragm. That's where the power is. And I tell you, lads, if you want to get that belly pushed out at the moment, you can to give that full support. Never be afraid of that because that's the powerhouse. But then it's like a column and it should be a fairly straight as possible column of air to get to your vocal cords. And then the sound is created up here. So for me, one of the first first warm-ups I do is purely humming. Now remember, when people, you see them in choirs and you see singers, they look like they're smiling. Now, the reason we do that is because we want to raise that soft palate, the palate at the back of your throat. That needs to be raised up. So always breathe in with a smile. And what that does, it raises the soft palate. And remember, sometimes if we sound flat, It's got nothing necessarily to do with the actual pitch. It's just the brightness of the vowel sound that you're creating. So what I like to do to warm up, first of all, is not sing a note, but to hum a note. I take in a big breath as if with a big smile. And I'm pushing that, I'm making that sound resonate right through into my sinuses, coming right to the front of my mouth. So breathe in with a smile, and then you can go down a simple scale. 
On the final note, that's a good practice for basses. Sopranos, I'm sorry if you're trying to sing that. That's a bit hard for you because I'm a bit lower, but you might want to try it much higher and come down. And when you're coming down, feel as if you're a puppet and you're on a string. You're not bouncing down and being dropped down. You're being let down gently as if on a string. Always think of that nice straight line. And so on. Even when you get down to the bottom, you can start making some noises. Ma, 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 ma. See, that sound is coming a bit further to the front of my mouth. Ma, me, me, mo, mo. It just starts making everything resonate and everything start buzzing together right at the front, behind your sinuses, in that cavity that is your glorious head. I've got a big one, so it's fairly easy for me to do. <laughs> so that, Ben, is my favourite warm-up, a simple humming. Ma, 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 me, 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 ma. And you can make all those lovely vowel sounds. A, E, E, O, U. Yeah, and you're just basically opening up your entire kind of resonance, aren't you? And that's a mm. great point about you saying you are the instrument. You know, this is exactly why singing is so special because it is just our bodies. We are making the sound. We're not using any instruments. We're not, there's no translation between what people are hearing and what we're uh, creating well, in terms exactly. of our sound, which I and love. Some and days, yeah. some days your int instrument can be a bit down, a bit yeah, tired. That's right. But you know, this is why we put on, I always say breathe in with the vowel sound that you're about to sing or with a smile. And that's, and you'll yes. see singers doing that. They look like they're always smiling with eyes bright and up and what have you. But also, importantly, you are the instrument, you need water. Always keep hydrated. Yeah, keep hydrated. Well, that's a great uh, piece of advice for people when they make their recordings as well, to breathe with a smile. I mean, that's going to serve two purposes. It's going to make them sing better. And they're also going to be looking like they're enjoying it and um, having fun <laughs> as well. So that's a great bit of advice. Well, what do you think? Even through the, the tricky parts. Yeah. What do you think? Should we have a, a sing? Have you got a Christmas carol in mind that we could just bash through once? Um, oh, look, Ben, I, I've had the great delight of choosing this one. It's mad. And this <laughs> this performance goes at a cracking pace. You won't keep up. The words we know quite well. The the well, <laughs> the, the main part of the verse you'll know. But when we get to the glory and the glory, it just goes crazily funny. Uh, look, I don't expect anybody to keep up, but this one is ding dong merrily on high. Oh, and this, this is hard. Goes, this, this is hard, but it goes. I mean, that that's hard to sing. So let's just get, give it our best shot, but no expectation here. Let's set the yeah. bar nice and low. I think that's important I agree, from but, my point of view. But let's, and again, as you said, Ben, let's have fun with it because if you look like you're enjoying it, and you know what? The audience, the people listening, they'll have fun with it too. This is the Adelaide Voices with Carl Crossan and Ding dong, merrily on high. Here it comes, eight counts in. Ding dong, merrily on high. Don't 
Damien Beaumont with you with Benjamin Northey, Ben Northey with the Adelaide Chamber Singers just then. Carl Crossan was directing a little bit of a warm-up with Ding Dong Merrily on High. Now, if you've, uh, if you've had a, a bit of a day at work, this is a great chance to join our fourth and final rehearsal for Christmas with you, Deborah Cheatham's beautiful carol, which will be coming together as a virtual carol. We're going to make history and we look forward to seeing you and hearing you on our virtual choir. Just a reminder, you have until November the 27th to record yourself. Go to our website, abc.net.au slash classic. You'll see everything there you'll need to know, including the music split into parts for us with the actual sheet music itself. But Ben, let's continue now with, uh, really let's get down to some of the nuts and bolts of this carol, which in parts, its simplicity is actually really quite difficult isn't it yeah well you were you were mentioning um before when we were having a chat uh about pitching notes after you've had a rest for a while so so is there one specific place that you'd like to look at Daniel? Ah, yes there is ben and that's uh well because i was only really concentrating on the bass line but it's a bar yeah. 39 now the altos and tenors they're singing a beautiful uh, line together and it was and i suppose the sopranos have to find that same note too we have to come in on yeah. the a on the and a. we come in on the vowel sound O. Now, sometimes coming in on a vowel can be quite difficult. So remember before I mentioned about breathing in the vowel sound you're about to sing. So that nice, bright smile with O. Oh, yeah. Breathe that O oh sound in so you'll be ready to pitch that note. But where do you find that note? Well, what's well, your strategy here? Well, my strategy here, I don't know if you can see it, but I've circled where the tenors sing that A. And I, in my mind, yeah, yeah. I just gently hum along with it and when they get to that a i keep that note in my head i always do this on my scores i always yeah. circle cheat notes so then i can pitch and that's my note there that i have to pitch. and that's the a on the word so is it in bar 37 is that the one yes. you're talking about so Two, actually you so it's the you same and note. so yeah so for example let's say the tenor line there uh is going there's so much more you so and then all of a sudden you're listening for that as they oh, they finish their phrase and then you know that your note is there on the a and the sopranos would, would do the same thing up an octave so that it's easy to find that's a great bit of advice really really great bit of advice and i guess it's the same going into bar 46 as well, well why don't we just sing verse two damien and and practice that uh, so Let's getting in, into bar 31. So I think we get a couple of bars introduction. We'll have a sing along. you go Damien did you pitch it all right uh, well I think I got it there but Ben I've got a question for you again it's moving yeah. from a vowel sound from one vowel sound to another again keeping yes. that nice and bright soft palate lifted but did you want a breath there between O and R do you think I was thinking of it at the end of R at the end of bar 42 that that's where there would be a little breath snatched there so I know it's kind of the end of the phrase but if it's possible to make those four bars that would be ideal. If you do need to snatch a breath, by all means, go for it because there should be enough people uh, to cover that as well. So they take a bit of time there in the recording as well. Well, why don't, why don't we have another go at, at verse two and sing it through again?
great. And then, and then, yeah, we're, we're on to the next entry, which again, the, the uh, basses and the sopranos have a note that they pick up from the altos and the tenors. So that we're all on this D that they finish Christmas day. And then, and off we are uh, into the chorus is the, is the next section. So what about this next section, Damien? Um, did you identify any spots? It gets a bit tricky into the key change, doesn't it? It's the key change, Ben. It will always be the key change. And even, I've got to say, when you're listening to the sing-along track with just your voice type alone, sometimes I find that harder to recognise the key change when you have the other the other uh, parts singing along. You can actually yeah. hear the key change. So when you're singing along and learning this, it's also good to often refer back to the full track with the soprano, alto, tenor and bass. So you can actually help pitch and hear where it's going. Absolutely. And, and just to isolate those bars around letter B, for example, if you just sang from the summer days are here, um, the pick up to bar 55, and then sang the first phrase of the key change, that would be a really good way to just do that repeatedly, you know, a bunch of times so that when you get to that spot, it's a, it's a spot that you feel very, very confident with. Uh, but you're absolutely right in terms of your your notes relative to the other notes. That's important. Do you think it's worth perhaps me just going through each of those lines for you know four, five or six bars around letter B? Would that be helpful? I think that would be a great idea. The other thing that I'd like to mention: always have your pencil with you. Sometimes when you see the different accidentals or the different, we go from sharps to flats, and then there's a natural, and it can it can be slightly daunting when you're first looking at it. At times, I actually would I put an ST which means semitone, between the notes that are a semitone, which they might look on, on face value. They might look as if you have to jump a whole tone. But sometimes mm. I just, for my own memory, think, oh, no, this one's only a semitone. That sometimes helps too. Absolutely. So between the E and the F or on here bringing, for example, in the soprano part, the G to the A flat, just making sure that you know that's a small step. Why don't we just sing that soprano part, just sopranos all together from the summer days, the pick up to bar 55. I'll give two beats in. Ready and... You know, and you could practice that a few times. The alto part, same place. Ready and... who are uh, down here uh, on an F sharp. Ready, and. Okay, and then the basses who are down here. They start actually start on the B natural going to the B flat there on the summer days. Ready, and. those parts it's, it's well worth doing and then you can notice there are some dynamics here uh, Damien did you pick up on those there's quite a bit of dynamic information from here to the end there is Ben and I have to admit at this point I've been remiss even thinking about the dynamics because I'm just trying to get the notes into my head but the dynamics are so important because it actually creates more sense and it will create more drama um, yes. so we really need to look at those dynamics and the, the different volumes that you see so absolutely ben, well yeah talk that, us through that, these yeah, that point that we get to is a, a classic point. And you're right. It's the last thing that you think about when you're learning notes. And I hope we're getting to that stage now where the notes are starting to stick and we can put this little bit of icing on this beautiful cake uh, that we're making. And if we all do them together, that's the thing about dynamics. We all have to do them uh, to make them really work. But at that point, yes, the basses in bar 61, they drop down to mezzo piano. So all of a sudden we've had this beautiful warm forte at letter B and their function changes. It's a, it's a little linking part on the word Christmas. Uh, and, they, and they just sort of blend in more with the accompaniment there. It's a more of an instrumental line. And then you notice the sopranos and altos at 62 have mezzo forte crescendo. So they're really supporting that line. And we're on our way dynamically to bar 66. And that's really where things open up and we get to sing out. 
So it's a great example of, and even, even before into letter B, when we have a crescendo, we have to be soft enough to make that difference so that there's somewhere, there's something left for us to, to really arrive at that extra gear. So one forte is not the same as two fortes. And so we're really saving for bar 66, this fortissimo, and that's the high point of the carol. Um, perhaps a star can guide you home this year. I mean, it's just such a wonderful moment there as well. We've got some extra dynamics around bar 72, 73. So this diminu diminuendo is important, but particularly the crescendo in bar 74. So uh, sopranos and altos, that, that crescendo that you have in that bar, you can hear on the recording, they really make a big deal of that. I think that's the thing when people see a, a, a diminuendo like that, they think I have to sing softer. It's the opposite. You have to be singing loud enough to make the diminuendo. So at the start of a diminuendo, you should be singing loudly. At the start of a crescendo, you should be singing soft enough, even if it means you have to drop down a little bit. So on the next system, that's the same bar 78, 79, um, the, the hairpins that we've got there, diminuendo crescendo into our beautiful one forte and coming toward the ending, which all of a sudden the character changes completely after we've had our, our note before letter C, which is really a, a pause in the, in the recording. All of a sudden, mezzo piano, very gently, and a beautiful, warm change of character. And that's a very important dynamic. And you see it's four bars of mezzo piano, and then it's mezzo forte, dolcissimo, and the reason for that is so that you can make the diminuendo in the third last bar. Because if we were singing too softly, uh, you wouldn't be able to make that diminuendo. And tell me, Damien, about singing softly, because a lot of people who aren't singers might just uh, lose their support or something. What, what's the best way to do that? <laughs> it's the hardest thing, Ben. It yeah. really is. You know, to sing loudly, is it's not hard. Think of when you sing the Hallelujah Chorus or something. We love a good belt up. But suddenly, if you have to sing gently, this is where all of your good techniques, some of those exercises that we've been talking about, come into play. Remember, you've got your, you've got your base support, which is your diaphragm. From that... You should always have that nice and full, and that is what gives you the support. Singing softly is the hardest thing to do because you, you have to rely fully on that support and just let the breath just come out ever so gently on top of that. And again, mm. always keep that smile. It's Sometimes singing softly is best if you even give a bit more of a smile because you can still support yourself but still sing softly. Yeah, It's hard, and that takes and you, practice. Yeah. You're not going to lose your pitch that way, I suppose, too, which is what you were talking about before with the smile. Why don't we have a sing into bar 47 to the end? And the other thing that I'd love to concentrate on, uh, and we'll do a full run of, of this as well, but is connecting our vowels. I'll talk a little bit more about that perhaps before before we do our full run, but the rec on the recording, the, the choir do that so beautifully. So we're going to be singing from the pick up to 47. We've been apart. Okay, so two bars of the backing in and off we go.
There it is. It's very moving, isn't it? And I'm getting a bit teary. A lot of people have apparently written in saying that they find it impossible to sing the ending because they're too emotional. And, I mean, really, who are we to stop that? You know, on the one hand, you you think the emotion is for the the listener. We should remain somewhat removed from... That's not what this is about. I would just I would just embrace those emotions, you know. If you can't sing because you're you're too emotional, go with and, that. Go with that I'm and put it on off. camera. Make make and a you great know where video. I, I found it was wonderful at the fourteen bits that this time really because I was concentrating a bit more on the dynamics, but to actually it builds up that lovely emotion forty and bringing it back down. There's a few points that I think that we that I need to concentrate on, mm. but. Uh, yeah, I think probably still my breathing, but that's all right. We can work on that. I always like to put little ticks uh, in the music where I like to take a breath to make sure that I do. And um, I'm just thinking too that it, it's important. There's a few moments in here where we really need to watch the conductor because, yeah. uh, Ben, you have the chance. To, you could do whatever you want at some of those emotional bits. Uh, when there's that break at, at C, there's that lovely chord. Yes. Then we come in and watch you. But also just in case you don't know, what what do the words mean at bar 87 right at the end we have mf so that's moderately loud but then we have dolcis and molto rel yes so dolcissimo as sweetly as possible and slowing down a lot molto rel slowing down a lot toward the end they they mainly slow down i have to say in the third last bar on the words truly need my dear and they don't slow down too much because that's also the enemy of um, singing. If if you have no breath left to get to the end, and they they do tie over an extra crotchet on the last the last note, dear, that goes for five beats. And I'm I'm showing that clearly. And it, you're right, Damien. I'm here as a reminder. My gestures are a reminder, a reinforcement of all of the things that we've done. And I'll be recording a performance video as well. Um, that that hopefully will be useful, you know. But but yes, um, please do look at the, the crazy hand signs that I'm doing. There's method behind my madness, I promise. <laughs> and there's been a few times when I've been singing and I think we're not allowed to take a breath yet. We're not allowed to take a breath yet. Yeah. Conductor, hurry up because I'm running out of breath. <laughs> oh, just in time. <laughs> the responsibility. Honestly, you can really hang singers out to dry if you're not uh, careful. It's yeah. And I wonder if the conductor really would under- would appreciate what goes through a singer's mind. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you know, the best the conductors time. like in opera are the ones that accompany the singers. Yes. They look after them. And that's the same somewhat with choirs. I mean, and, and this is the difficulty with this. You know, I can't hear necessarily what everybody's doing. However, um, we can we can go on our experience and people like you giving us your advice as well as to what can work. And they've got that wonderful recording as well. So I think we should have a full sing through the whole thing because we're at that point now where people are probably, you know, uh, about to submit their recordings and and we should consolidate all the things we've done. The final thing, apart from obviously this emotional connection with the music and to enjoy it and to to, um, sing with great feeling, is that this idea of legato, of connecting the words together. And that is, the, that is the connection of vowels. And even if you look at the opening line way back on the first page of the Sopranos, um, they sing, Can you find your way home Christmas night? Now, the way that I say that is not the way that we sing when we want to connect those words. It's much more about the long vowel. Can you find your way home Christmas night? And you can hear that in the recording. They're always supporting the vowel. It's almost like there's a little crescendo on every single vowel. And that's something that will give us a beautiful legato throughout, which is exactly what Deborah Cheatham has asked for. So let's keep that in mind while we do our full run as well. And Ben, can I just... One thing that just reminded me that I just found that in the music at bar 54... Yep. On the word suddenly, and again, this is where we use consonants and vowels. Sometimes we can use them to great effect. Um, It might not necessarily be that easy with a full choir, but when the word suddenly, you'll see that Deborah Cheatham's put a a little stress and suddenly she Mm -hmm. wants us to make a little bit of that. Now, I don't know how much you want to put onto that, Ben, but it it probably just a little bit of a stress and suddenly, because it's on the S too, there can be... It's a nice little way just to make a little little point of that. 
It's a great observation, and it's just word painting as well. The way that she's mm-hmm. matched up that that musical gesture with the meaning of that word, but it does, they get off the s pretty quickly there, don't they? You're right to mm-hmm. the to the a uh, the a uh syllable of suddenly, and suddenly there's a a, a great Perfect. placement of that. Yeah, so that's something to look out for as well. Well, what do you think, Damien? Shall we give it a go all the way through? What could possibly go wrong? Let's give it a try. What could go wrong? <laughs> Dynamics. <laughs> Tone, yeah, pitch, everything. Smile, don't cry, or cry a little, you know. <laughs> and then you can just forget all that and make music <laughs> and enjoy it. Enjoy it. It's a lovely piece. say Deborah Cheatham you should be very proud of that carol Australia should be very proud of that carol and I can't wait for it all to come together you've been taking part of our fourth rehearsal for Christmas with you by Deborah Cheatham and the maestro himself Ben Northey Ben thanks for doing that oh thank you Damien gee it was good to get your input into into this I learned a lot myself today so thank you well look nothing's perfect when it comes to the human the human form as the voice, but I hope you've learned a little today. Just a reminder, you have until November the 27th to uh, submit your entry into Christmas with you, and 
We really would encourage you to. We want to make this as great a success as it should be and pay tribute to all of us that have been a part for so long this year. Don't forget on our website, abc.net.au slash classic, all of the details are there. You can sing your parts. They're all separated into the four parts, soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. Of course, the sheet music's there as well. And there's a how-to guide too on how to record because that can be a bit tricky as well. We've got it all there for you. You can see all about the virtual choir, including the beautiful artwork by Deanne Gilson. It really is a, a wonderful website at the moment to go and explore. So please do, abc.net.au slash classic. Thank you. Thank you for joining in. Ben Northy, huge thanks to you too. No worries, Damien. Good luck, everybody. Get submitting and we'll all be able to look back on 2020 with something very, very special to finish with.